So this is our YouTube NLC Arts Lab, which is public YouTube. You just search NLC Arts Lab to get to it. You'll also see it linked in our assignments and in our materials, and it's linked right in our course outline. So we just finished our orientation projects. If you're still working on them, get those finished by midnight tonight. On this last one, you were asked to include a favorite children's book. It could also be a, an animated series, a comic strip, comic book, whatever it might be. When I click on next now, it's going to take us to a new unit because now we start unit two. If we want to jump right to that unit, because we see it in the course outline that that's what we're working on today, it's going to say what our actions are for today is working on unit two. Also, just a quick reminder here in the video, this is the only required reading for the semester, but it is required. <laughs> All the rest is optional to help flesh out your understanding of a topic, give you extra practice, but this one is required because it's about copyright. And we are going to be learning digital image mining and compositing using other people's pixels. That is legally precarious. There are ways we are protected under fair use, educational spontaneous fair use in this class. But if you take what you make in this class and try to sell it or try to use it to represent yourself outside of an educational context, you want to understand your copyright of the image and how you are impacted by the copyright of the images that you are using. So that's what we're getting introduced to. This exercise, exercise one, I call a line art jumble. And you can get to it right away by going to unit modules in the course. If you're used to online courses, most students like to click on modules at the side, but I just find this really, really boring. But this will also go through each thing. So instead, I like the course to be designed where you have our first day orientation stuff. You want to do all of that before you start this. Our course outline. And then unit modules. This is the whole course. We are moving to unit two. We finish and knock them down like dominoes as we go. So this is our introduction to compositing. It's an exercise, not an assignment, which means it's worth two points. It's pass fail. If you don't turn anything in, you get zero points. If you turn something in, but it doesn't yet meet all the requirements, you'll get one point and then you can resubmit it to get full points. And if you meet all the requirements, even if it's not artistically or creatively brilliant or interesting, it will still show that you understand the requirements and the component. This is just introducing you. So it's pretty easy to get two points as long as you have the requirements. This is what some examples look like. And always I will include a lot of past student and instructor examples. So I call this a line art jumble. Now, can you guys pick the books that these come from? Let's see. What do you, this was probably the most recognizable. So yeah, you can see Spider-Man. What else can you see? Yeah, Iron Man, Captain America. So this is all Marvel characters. Yep, the above you have Hunger Games using different images from their, their covers, from coloring books, things like that. What about this one? Yep, it has this medieval look. Could be Game of Thrones. But you have this ring here, yeah. So Lord of the Rings. So we always do this as some sort of themed project. It might surprise you that Lord of the Rings is a banned book, which means it's a challenged book in any public collection, public libraries, universities. We, we get letters saying, please take this off your shelves. In the case of Lord of the Rings, it's because it features magic, features a lot of pot smoke. And so that's why people say kids shouldn't read it, right? So one option for this, which is in these directions, is you could pick a banned book. This is a list of the banned books in our NLC library. You can research why they're banned, right? Banned just means that they're challenged. <laughs> you know, it doesn't mean that unless the library decides or the school decides, which more and more are deciding to do to keep the lawsuits at bay, but not to have. But also the Bible is on here. Also, a lot of maybe your favorite books are on here. Like A Wrinkle in Time, the, the Witches, Harry Potter, The Color Purple, you know, Fahrenheit 451, 
It's all about book burning. Yes. So sometimes if something is challenging, it also means it might be higher quality. So you see a lot of good books on the bad books. But anyway, you have options, right? If you had missed class and you didn't know that you could do your favorite children's book or cartoon, you could also do one of these, right? And that's what my... Yep. That's what my demo is based on. I chose this book. It's a more recent band book. Um, it's one called The Hate You Give, which I recommend. It's a good book. So, so I chose some line art images. I did digital image mining for, for high quality images. I show you some examples of how to do that. And then we're going to composite them together into an 8 by 10 inch by 300 pixel per inch file that's suitable for printing. And we're going to take at least five different images and make it into our own original composition. And then, as a bonus, though it exceeds the requirements, that will get you two out of two points, I'm going to show you how to add color and texture and effects. Whether you have time to do it or not, I'll show it to you. All right. How do we start this project? First, we need to pick the thing that we're going to research, that we're going to image mine. I am going to choose that, uh, that book that I liked as a kid, Professor Wormbog. Again, we added that to our, because I do different things most semesters, added that to my post here in question of the day zero. So I don't have to only use images from the book. Maybe I want to research images that are by this illustrator, Mercer Mayer. And I want to try to help you make connections between your favorite visual things and their creators. So if you really like Spider-Man, you might like Spider-Man from a certain era of Spider-Man, right? So whether it's a, a, a John Romita Spider-Man, whether it's a Steve Ditko Spider-Man, whether it's a Sal Buscema Spider-Man, whether it's a Hal Foster Spider-Man, whether it's a Frank Miller Spider-Man, these are all great classic Spider-Man artists, right? They all draw, draw with a different line quality. What I'm going to look for is my Professor Wormbog, and I'm just doing it in a general Google search, but then I want to refine that to an image search because I'm only interested in images, not videos, not websites, not poems, not anything else. But I want the, all these images to be high quality. High quality images for us is going to be minimum of 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. So I go to Tools, and I say Size, and I say Large. That's how Google defines an image that's at least 1,000 pixels in one dimension. Now I'm going to look for images that have some nice line art, like this one, and I'm going to click on it. I cannot steal the image from here because that is a thumbnail image, and it's only about 200 pixels by 200 pixels. Not good enough. Instead, I have to click on it and hover over it to see how many pixels it is. And this image is 1,200 by 1,300 pixels. Then to see it more clearly, because maybe it's a bad photograph with just a high-res camera, I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to say Open Image in New Tab. This is true on any computer, right? This is just browser-based functions. Then I look at that tab, and then, because it's larger than the computer screen, which is a good sign, if it's over 1,000 pixels, it should be larger than the computer screen, it's going to give me this magnifying glass. I'm going to click on it, and that's going to show me its full resolution, which means the pixels... I'm seeing are the, the size of the pixels at screen resolution. All right, so that one's good to go. How do I save that? I found good quality material. I'm going to save it to my desktop. I right click and say save image as. I don't need to change its name, but you can if you want. You can call it reference one. And I want to save it to the desktop. If it says anywhere else, you can always, on a Mac, say Command-D to navigate it to the desktop. The long way to do that is to use this drop-down and to find desktop here. You always want to save to your desktop. Why? Because you're going to learn your first two-key shortcut here, which is function key F11. If you hit function key F11, it will clear your, all your applications so you can see your desktop. My desktop is pretty darn cluttered, right? Your desktop should be clean as a whistle. 
I'll show you how we organize our desktop after this. So if I saved it to the desktop, I should be able to see it. I want to find it and put it off where I can see it. All right, good. Yes. So now I'm going to go back. Another reason I open it up in a new tab is it will, I'll leave it open in that tab. I can go back to my search results and keep looking. I'm looking for good lines. You know what has the best lines? Coloring books, right? Things that aren't colored. Things that are made to be just black and white. So here we have an illustration. It's larger than 1,000 by 1,000. I'm going to open it in a new tab. Zoom in on it. It's pretty good. It's by a different artist, but it came up in the search results. So it's probably on the same web page as this artist. But I might need to refine my search because I want a lot of monsters and kind of imaginative stuff. But this one's kind of fun. I'll grab this one. Has anyone read this book? It's, it's a good one. Save that to the desktop, but make sure it looks good first. Then go back to your search. And you can always verify. Function key F11. Here it is. I just need to clean up from last class. Put things away. All right. So now I have two references. For this project, we are asked to have at least five. And you know what makes it a whole lot easier to do with line art is to not just search for the size, but search for the color as well. So I can use color images as long as they have black lines, but I'm going to have to get rid of all the color. And that's something I'm going to teach you. But if I look for black and white images, then I can just get images like this that show the, oops, show the artist's signature. Where did it go? Open image in new tab. Right click, open image in new tab. There we go. So pretty cool to have like the little sketch by the by the author and illustrator. Maybe save that. That, my friends, is a zipper up a zoo. It's okay to have an irrational emotional attachment to children's books. I encourage it. But if I see that, oh, this one's fantastic. <laughs> so here we have a paper doll made of Professor Wormbog. So I'm going to open the image in a new tab. Remember from here, not from here. Otherwise, you'll get an image that's not large enough. And you can close some of these tabs, too, as long as you've saved them. Ah, nice, clear images. You can find a lot of coloring book pages online this way. From your favorite properties. Okay, now if I need to spread it out, maybe I make it larger than just that one book. And I search for that illustrator's works. So I go to images, I go to tools. Each time you do a new search, you have to reset your tools. I'm going to set it to be large. I'm going to set it to be black and white. And then I can even go a little bit further and I can set it to a type that is line drawn. And then we see kind of Mercer Mare's most famous character, which is not in my, my favorite book. But we do see some stuff that is from my favorite book, like this one. And then I can see that it is 1,100 pixels by 1,600. As long as it's over 1,000, it's good. I'm going to open that image in a new tab, see if I want to use it. Yeah, that looks fun. Save image as to the desktop. Do not waste your time by saving images that aren't big enough. You're not going to like how they look. So take the time, just like you would if you were looking for silver, in, before you put it into your bag, before you put it onto your desktop, make sure it's pretty good quality. All right, and then let's see. 
just line art that I like.